This demo illustrates how to test a chip implemented as an HDL program using a test script. So to get started, I go to my file system and get into project one. And what you see here are all the files that we gave you for project one and the list, which is alphabetical, ends with the files associated with the XOR chip. So let's take a look at XOR HDL. Well, I've already implemented this uh, particular chip and the implementation is identical to what we saw in the previous demo, so there's nothing new here. Let me minimize it. And let's take a look at XOR TST. This is the test script, which is designed to test the XOR HDL program. You don't have to write such scripts because we provide them. And basically the script says, it, it instructs the hardware simulator to load XOR.HDL into the simulator. It creates an output file called uh, XOR.out. It will compare the generated output file to the supplied compare file. And then the script goes through a set of four testing scenarios in which we basically produce the truth table of the XOR gate, right? Because we generate outputs for 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So that's the test script. And uh, finally, we have the compare file that lists the outputs that the test script is expected to produce. So basically, if your HDL program is well written, we would expect the test script to produce what you see here, which is the uh, truth table of the XOR chip. So let's minimize the uh, compare file and uh, let's bring back the HDL file which we will use as a reference and uh, minimize the finder, go to the uh, simulator. And you know, in previous demos, I used the load the chip icon in order to load the chip, but now I'm going to load a script. So I'm going to use this icon here and look for my XOR TST script. And I found it uh, here. So loading it. And what I see here is the same file that we saw before when we played with the, with the file system. And the yellow marker is a cursor that tells you that we are now positioned at the beginning of the first step of the test script. Actually, a test script consists of steps and micro steps. The micro steps end with a comma and the steps end with a semicolon. So when I click this uh, play icon here, several things will happen. First of all, I executed the first step or the first four micro steps, which loaded the XOR HDL program into the simulator, created an output file, and instructed the simulator to compare the output file to the supplied XOR.CMP file. And now we are ready to start the actual testing. So as you see, in the first step, the script sets the A input to zero, the B input to zero. It then evaluates the chip logic, and then it creates an output line. So to execute this step, I click the play icon. And each time I play click, I execute a bunch of micro steps up to the next semicolon. In other words, I execute a step. And now we came to the end of uh, the script. One more click, just to be on the safe side. And I get this very nice message, end of script, comparison ended successfully. So that's one way to execute a script. Another way is to use the fast forward icon. So let me uh, illustrate it. I'm going to rewind the script and start afresh. And then if I click the fast forward, the script will actually execute automatically, so to speak, and will go through all the steps uh, one after the other. 
I know that the test ended successfully because I got this nice message, but if I want, I can also look at my output file. And here it is. It looks like indeed we managed to generate the truth table of XOR gate. I can also look at my compare file, which should be identical. Indeed it is. Go back to the output file. And another thing that I can do is uh, rewind the test script with the output file visible. See, when you do it, the output file becomes empty because I start now from scratch. And now I will play the fast forward uh, icon. And you will see the output file being generated one test uh, step at a time. So what we saw so far is the nice experience that you will have when your HDL code is correct. But in many cases, the HDL code that you wrote, namely the code that the test has loaded into the simulator, will include all sorts of errors. And then the test will not be such a smashing success. Let's see what happens when your HDL code is buggy. So for example, let's go back to my XOR code and focus, say, on the last statement. One error which happens uh, frequently is that people forget to specify one of the pins of one of the chip parts. So for example, let's erase the out equals out specification. And uh, what we have here is an HDL code which is syntactically correct, but it is underspecified. It doesn't say anything about what should be the output of the OR gate or the OR chip part. Now, in our HDL, when you don't specify a pin, it is always set by default to zero. And therefore, in this particular case, the out pin of the XOR chip appears nowhere in the code, and therefore it will be set by default to zero, and this uh, wonderful chip will always output zero. So you know the chip uh, spins its wheels, so to speak, and uh, it has chip parts that do all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, it always outputs zero. So let's save this wonderful chip and test it in the hardware simulator. So going back to look at my script, and just to be on the safe side, I'm going to reload the script. I don't really have to do it, but it doesn't hurt. And uh, rewind, it doesn't hurt either. And now let's fast forward and see what happens. Well, so far so good, but oops, now we get this nasty error message, comparison failure at line three. Well, we can take a look at the compare file, and the cursor shows you on which line the testing stopped with an error. So apparently the out value is incorrect. Uh, the out value should be one. Let's take a look at the output file, and we see that in the output file, the out value is zero. So indeed, we got um, a comparison uh, contradiction. And the way the simulator works is that once you find the first error in the testing, the testing stops with an error message. So now you have to go back to your code, to the, X, uh, to the uh, HDL code, figure out what went wrong. If you're lucky, uh, you will find it uh, quickly and you know, correct the error, save the file, go back to the simulator, rewind, rerun the testing, and uh, let's see what happens. Hallelujah, the test ended successfully. So this was a long demo, but we covered a lot of ground, and I hope that it will help you when you will start working on your own HDL programs.